speaking today on homemade happiness, Psalm 127. Psalm 127, if you'll stand with me together as we read God's Word, Psalm 127. And I'm going to read down through the end of 128. Psalm 127, verse number 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. When you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy, and it shall be well with you. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house. Your children like olive plants all around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you out of Zion, and may you see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Yes, may you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. These two chapters just seem to go hand in hand. As I said, I wanted to speak on the family today, on Mother's Day. What better text could I find than these two chapters that are progressive in nature. He's talking about children in 127, children being a heritage from the Lord, and then he's talking about children's children in 128, even our grandchildren. Father, we bless you. We thank you for your word. We pray you'll bless the preaching of it this morning to every heart here today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I found a little booklet in my library called The Christ-Centered Home, written by Dr. Billy Graham back in 1961, after he and Ruth had been married for 18 years and had all their children, all the children they were going to have. And I thought it was interesting, written so long ago by a man that would go on and be married for 60 years or so. And he said, The entire institution of marriage and the home is under greater stress and strain than ever before. In this complex age in which we live, we are finding it more and more difficult to keep our homes intact. A psychiatrist recently said 75% of all marriages in America are unhappy. Why and what is the root cause? Now, this is 1961. I can only imagine that the statistics have worsened in the last 50 years since this was written. Someone else has asked the question, what is a home? A roof to keep out the rain, four walls to keep out the wind, floors to keep out the cold. Yes, but home is more than that. It's the cry of the baby, the song of the mother, the strength of the father, the warmth of loving hearts, and the light from happy eyes, kindness and loyalty and comradeship. That's what makes up a home. The home is the first school and church for young ones where they learn what is right and what is good and what is kind, where they go for comfort when they are hurt or sick, where joy is shared and sorrow is eased, where fathers and mothers are respected and loved and where children are wanted. That's a home where the simplest food is good enough for kings because it is earned, where money is not as important as love and kindness. And as someone has said, where even the tea kettle sings out for happiness, that is home. So we're speaking about homemade happiness today. And the first thing I had to do was go to the, go to the Strong's Concordance and check out these words from 127 and 128. And what I discovered was they're the same word in the Hebrew Bible, esher. Whether it's translated happy or whether it's translated blessed, it's the same word in the Hebrew Bible. So you find it multiple times in these two chapters. That's why I've called the sermon Homemade Happiness, because it talks about being blessed and and being happy. Verse 5 of 127, happy is the man who has his quiver full of them, that is, of children. Uh, Then the 128th opens up with the same word, happy or blessed is everyone who fears the Lord and who walks in his ways. And then you find it again in verse number 2, 
When you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy, and it shall be well with you. And then you find it again in verse number 4. Behold, thus shall the man be happy, thus shall the man be blessed. Esher is the Hebrew word who fears the Lord. So it says, how happy. Or Philip's commentary says, happy, happy. <clears throat> or the Duck Dynasty Bible says, happy, happy, happy. I don't know, but anyways... <clears throat> I just thought it was interesting that you find this word happy in this text. I find that word used throughout the Old Testament, Leah. You remember the Lord had closed up uh, Rachel's womb, but Leah's womb the Lord had opened. And, and Leah, after she had had several children, then encouraged Jacob to go into her handmaid Zilpha. And she bore him Gad and Asher. And after that, Leah said, Happy am I. I'm happy now with all these boys and all these children God's given to me. Israel, God said to Israel, The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Happy art thou. God says, as long as you keep me as your... Blessed is that nation. Happy is that nation whose God is the Lord. Well, no wonder we're under so much stress no wonder we're under so much stress even as believers because our, our happiness is to be found in Christ. He says in Proverbs 14, 21, if, that if you have mercy on the poor, you will be happy. It says in Proverbs 16, 20, if you'll trust in the Lord, you'll be happy. It says in Proverbs 29, 18, if you'll keep God's law, you will be happy. It's the same word, blessed, happy, and it all kind of goes back to that very first psalm that kind of puts it in a negative way, whereas Psalm 128 puts it in a positive way. Psalm 1 says, blessed is the man who doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, doesn't stand in the path of sinners, doesn't sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. That man is blessed, that man is, is happy, because he doesn't do these things. He doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, he doesn't stand in the path of sinners, he doesn't sit, sit in the seat of the scornful, and then it says in a positive way in our text today, happy is everyone who fears the Lord and who walks in his ways. So you have here today a godly husband, a godly dad. Psalm 128, verse 1, blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, walks in his ways. Now you're talking about the husband primarily here. When you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy. It shall be well with you and your wife. So we know he's talking about the man in verses 1 and 2. And your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house. And then he talks about your children like olive plants all around your table. So you've got godly father, godly dad, faithful wife, loving mother, happy and productive children all around the table. This is homemade happiness. Or uh, we could say laughter, which is a gift from God. And that is used here in the Psalms as well. Happiness, or look back in 126, verse 1, when the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. Our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue was singing. And they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them and the Lord has done great things for us and we are glad. So when you go to a Cracker Barrel today and you're sitting around the table and somebody asks, what did Pastor Dennis say today? What was the message about? Now, hopefully they weren't here. Hopefully they were asking you because you were here. And they say, what did Pastor Dennis preach about today? I want you to tell them, Pastor Dennis said, our homes need more happiness. Our homes need more laughter. More joy. Sarah said in Genesis 21.6, God has made me laugh. God is for us being happy. God is for us having laughter. Now, there are some people, without question, that are laughing their way to hell. God's not for that. But I think if anybody ought to be happy, it's Christians. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. It makes a cheerful countenance. 
So we need more joy, more leisure, more vacations. I was told early on in ministry that the devil never takes a vacation. My response is I don't model myself after the devil. I model myself after the Lord Jesus Christ, and Jesus took a lot of vacations. Amen. So if you want to be like the devil, don't take any vacations. Don't have any leisure time. But Jesus came apart. Because if you don't come, if you don't come aside, if you don't come apart, you will come apart. So what we're going to talk today, here's the outline. It's on the back of the bulletin for you. It's the uh, construction of the home, the conservation of the home, the contentment of the home, the children of the home, and the center of the home. We'll just walk through these very quick this morning in the next 15 minutes that I have with you. The construction of the home. 127.1, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. He's not saying here that God's against building, or he's not saying here that God's against watchmen. Those things are important. Uh, my son got to be with Vice President Pence yesterday. And out of 200 state troopers, he was chosen to get to shake his hand and have his picture taken with him. So I've been sending it out everywhere. It says, hey, we know what the 2024 ticket's going to be. Pence Hollinsworth. But anyways. <laughs> <clears throat> Amen. Give me six more years of Trump and eight more years of Pence, and I'll be a happy, happy, happy man. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Now, there's a question as to whether or not Solomon wrote this psalm or whether this psalm was written for Solomon. Either way, you know, Solomon talked a lot about vanity. You know, the whole book of Ecclesiastes, vanity of vanities, behold, all is vanity. He's just saying here that when you're building a house, unless the Lord builds a house, you labor in vain, there's that word, who build it, unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. And then he says it again in verse 2, it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for, for, for so, here's the teenager's favorite verse, for so he gives his beloved sleep. You'll, you'll get that after a while. <clears throat> The construction of the home. So whether you're building a temple or whether you're building a home or whether you're building a church, we need the Lord God to do it. Jesus said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You can build a church on a lot of different things. Some churches are built on programs. Some, some churches are built on preaching. Some churches are built on music. Some churches are built on great choirs. But Jesus said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Let God build his church. Let Jesus be the Lord and the head of the church. And you remember they tried to build a place called Babel. And the Lord came down and confused the languages. And the Lord brought an end to that building project. Then you'll remember that God said, don't rebuild Jericho. But there was a guy by the name of Hiel who went in and tried to rebuild uh, Jericho. And uh, God brought an end to that project as well here's what he says in Malachi chapter 1 verse number 4 but we will return and we'll build the desolate places that they're boasting we're going to build the desolate places and God says to them they may build but I will throw down they may build but I will throw down so the Lord God is the one who is in charge so here's the lesson that we learn. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Let God build it. Let God build it his way. Good hard work is, 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 is important. But he also says it's vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, and to eat the bread of sorrows. Recognize that God's for pleasure too. God's for leisure too. God's for vacation too. And God's for you taking some time out once in a while. So here's the statement. If you're burning the candle at both ends, you're not as bright as you think you are. All right? You'll get that one after a while. But anyways, here's what I'm trying to say. We drive too fast. We laugh too little. We pray too seldom. We watch TV too much. Our houses are too big. Our families are too small. We talk too much. We love too little. We've got two incomes but more divorce. We're too grim. And 
we don't have enough joy. There is a time to weep, and there is a time to laugh. And so the preacher today preached on how we need more laughter and more joy in the home. Now look at the conservation of the home in verse number one also. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. And so we need God's protection. Our dependency ought to be on God. Strong military, so important. Build a wall, so important. What do we have? Uh, five, oh, I don't even know. Was it half a million? I don't know. People at our borders trying to come into our country. Even the Democrats now are saying we've got a situation at the border. We've got a crisis at the border. And we absolutely do. But our dependency is on God. Prayer. The church. The word of God. Having examples. I don't have to tell you that the home's under attack today. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 19, he said, have you not read that he who made them in the beginning made them male and female? And for this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother, be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Make no mistake about it, the first marriage in the Bible was between a man and a woman, and that's what marriage is. I know a lot of you are thinking, this guy's really political. No, I'm just biblical. See, all of this stuff was moral long before it ever became political. Now, we've been preaching for the sanctity of, of life for 30, for, for 40 some years now. I have. The church has always believed in that. Church has always believed marriages between a man and a woman. Unless you're Heritage United Methodist Church and a few others way out in left field. Look, the church believes the Bible. We just preach the Bible. And if it's a political hot button issue, oh well. So then, they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore, what God hath joined together, let not man separate. So God's for the home. God's for marriage. Jesus is the great home builder. Satan is the great home wrecker. Heard about a young couple who were on their way to get married. They had an accident. Both of them were killed. They were up in heaven. They look up the angel Gabriel and they said, we were on our way to get married. We had an accident and now we're in heaven. Can you, St. Peter, can you get us a preacher and let us get married. Five years went by. And uh, finally, Gabriel showed up with a preacher and they got married. They had heavenly bliss for a while, but it didn't turn out too good. And, and so they said, you know, this marriage didn't turn out the way we thought it was. Uh, Gabriel, can we get a divorce? Gabriel said, this is a really serious problem. He said, it took me five years to find a preacher. How long do you think it's going to take me to find a lawyer? So the home's under attack today, and there's uh, lawyers on every corner because uh, they're in great demand, especially divorce lawyers. So beware on this Mother's Day 2019, beware of immorality, beware of drugs and alcohol. Ephesians 5, 18, don't be drunk with wine, wear it as excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Beware of selfishness. Beware of stress, because God wants to conserve your home. God wants you to finish well. God wants you to celebrate your 50th anniversary. The contentment of the home, verse 2. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Listen to these verses from uh, Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 23, verses 4 and 5. Do not overwork to be rich because of your own understanding. Cease. Will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle toward heaven. So God says don't just don't overwork just to get more and more. So when, it, when are you going to have enough? And when are you going to start enjoying life? When will you come to the end of discontentment and saying more and more and more and learn Hebrews 13, 5? God says be content. Just be content. Covetousness, not to be part of our 
not to be part of our makeup. Proverbs chapter 15 and verses 13 through 17. Let me read these verses for you. Proverbs 15 and verse number 13. A merry heart. A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. The heart of him who has understanding seeks knowledge, but the mouth of fools feeds on foolishness. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he who is of a merry heart has a continual feast. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure with trouble. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a fatted calf with hatred. So play and walk and eat right and stay healthy and just recognize that you can have a feast with Hamburger Helper. Look at the children of the home in verses 3 through 5. Behold, children are an heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. So he says here, children are desirable. They're a heritage from the Lord. They're a gift from God. That's what that word means. They're a gift from God. And they're directable. They're like arrows in the hand of the warrior. While they're under your roof, they are directable. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. Psalm 22, 6. And they are dependable. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. This verse just says, many children, many happinesses. Many children, many happinesses. They're our heritage, verse 3. They're our helpers, verse 4. And they are our happiness, our source of happiness, verse number 5. I lost my dad in 2001. Lost my mother within the last uh, eight or nine months. This is my first Mother's Day without my mom here. The thing that I remember uh, growing up, I wish I could go back, Mark, and just hear my dad call me once again after he's been playing golf and say, have I got news for you? And then tell me about his, I introduced him to the game of golf when he retired in, in uh, 1991, 1990. And then he lived 11 years after that. And boy, did he fall in love with the game of golf. And he would often call me in the evenings and tell me about his golf game. And, and I, I, one thing I remember, too, is his stories and his laughter. Just, I, I'd give anything if I could hear my dad laugh again. Or if I could hear him tell a story. Or play a prank on someone. And my wife, Doreen, knows what I'm talking about. And I thought this week, what will my children remember me by? What will my grandchildren remember? remember me by will they remember the laughter will they remember the the happiness will they remember the 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 great stories will they sit around at the funeral or after the funeral and talk about the the funny stories will they talk about the vacations will they talk about the the trips will they talk about the 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 board games will they talk about the times that we spent together doing things and and living life together or will they say well you know Dad sure made a lot of money, but he worked all the time. Never had time for us. Children of the home. Look at the center of the home. And I, and I, got, I said, well, I've got to come up with another C. And I got it from Billy Graham's book, The Christ-Centered Home. And the center of the home is right here in 128. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord who walks in his ways. That's... Your life is centered in the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed. Who's blessed? Who's happy? Everyone. Doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. Doesn't matter what the color of your skin is. Doesn't matter your nationality. Your gender. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. You want happiness? It's all centered in Christ. Christ said, I came to give you life and give it more abundantly. Happy is everyone who fears the Lord and walks in his ways. When you eat the labor of your hands, you will be happy. It shall be well with you. So God says, I'm going to bless your finances. God says, if you'll work hard, I promise I'm going to meet all your needs. My God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. 
give us this day our daily bread. He promises he will do that. When you eat the labor of your hands, and that's what we work for. We work to eat, don't we? I mean, we, we work to put food on the table. So don't ever say, well, you know, one more child, how much is that going to cost me? No, God says, bless this man that has his quiver full of them. Trust me, it's worth every bit of it, all the sweat that it'll take to put food on that table. God says, it's worth it. You will be happy, and it'll be well with you. God says, I'm going to bless your future. I'll bless your finances. I'll bless your future. It's going to be well with you. I'm going to take care of you. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the heart of your house. Your children like olive plants all around your table. I'm going to bless your finances. I'm going to bless your future. I'm going to bless your family. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you out of Zion. The Lord bless you out of Zion. Here's this benediction in number six. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Blessed. Great benediction. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The, bl the Lord bless you out of Zion, and may you see the good of Jerusalem. God says, I'll bless your nation. Happy is that nation, happy is that nation whose God is the Lord. Yes, may you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. And um, since I've been quite political this morning, let me make one more political statement. It may have been said in jest, but I think this president deserves two more years added on to his eight for what's been robbed from him by Hillary Clinton and her thugs. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you'll live long on the earth. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and in the admonition of the Lord. Homemade happiness. I hope you found it in Jesus Christ. And I hope you, your wife and your children and your husband, your children, your grandchildren, rise up and call you blessed. God bless you women who love the Lord, members of this church, and you men who stood by them for all these years. How many of you have been married for 50 years? Raise your hand. Many, many, many of you. Thank God for you. Appreciate you so much. When you leave out of church today, there's a gift for you. And it's our way of saying how much we love you and appreciate you. Let's stand together this morning for our prayer and our invitation time. God, there's no question how much I love this country. There's no question how much I love this president and how much I love this vice president. And I'll never apologize for that. No question how much I love Doreen Hollinsworth, this woman who stood by me, been the ideal pastor's wife for 37 years. There's no question about how much I love the church that Jesus Christ purchased with his own blood. And there's no question how much I love the Word of God. Now, Lord, all these things I've just mentioned, I'm willing to lay my life down for. I'll die for every one of those. And I thank you for Jesus Christ who died for me. And Lord, I love you. And I'm not ashamed of you. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God, the salvation to everyone who believes. And I want to thank you for the happiness you put in my heart and in my home. I want to thank you for my children and my grandchildren. And God, I pray that long after I'm gone, that they, every single one of them, will know the happiness and the joy and the love and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that you will bless them, Lord. You'll cause your face to shine upon them. You'll give them peace. You'll lift up your countenance upon them and be gracious unto them. God, bless this church. Bless these homes. And God, bless this great nation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.